Love, light, greetings, gratitude, blessings and blessings. Beautiful, bountiful, ascension star family. My divinity to yours. Welcome if you're new. Welcome back if you're returning. Thank you for all your love, your light, your support, your hearted comments, and importantly, is our collective unite in light. Together in oneness and wellness, for a planetary divineness. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 23-8-2024, 21 the world card, major changes in the world. And three is Empress, feminine changes in our personal and collective lives shifting the consciousness from the dominating patriarchal masculine boxed orthodox energy into a beautiful nurturing fertile contouring sensuous feminine divine energy bringing through a collective balance of softness and gentleness and kindness and wellness and healing nurturance to us all and of course it's a beautiful day for you to manifest if you're a woman yourself your health your beauty your glow your divinity and of course if you're a man to send that beautiful energy also in yourselves to heal from past wounds from past lives of being treated badly mistreated and abused as a feminine energy and of course for the children of our planet. Please do join me in prayer as we pray for peace on earth. Spirit Divine, Mother Father, we pray for united world of brotherhood and sisterhood, of tolerance, patience, understanding amongst all people. We pray for an end to war, to suffering, we pray for healing of sexual abuse of our children, our women, our elderly, and even our men. We pray for an end to subjugation of women and the innocence of all humanity. For the abolition of animal cruelty. We pray that humankind shall respect and honour the earth and all the realms of nature, all the kingdoms, fauna and flora, the crystal, the elements. We pray for a global awakening of humanity, for a restoration of grace in the world and divine consciousness, spiritual consciousness, the victory of people and the forces of light as we work as a collective united with might to fight in light and of course the fulfillment of the divine plan and so it is thank you thank you thank you let us do the reading quickly we ask spirit to bring us a soul message for the collective listening one message spirit thank you our message is do I surround myself with people who lift me up of course you must. Let's read the message. The people with whom we surround ourselves to determine who we become. Does your tribe fill you up? Do they inspire you? Do they believe in you? Do they help you step into your greatest potential? And your sole action is make a desire list of the type of people with whom you wish to surround yourself. And clarify if there's anyone in your life who no longer serves you. Can you love them from a distance? 
essentially spirit is asking you to make the correct changes and align yourself with people, places, situations and things, desires and interests that will grow and glow you. I have said before, invest in things that will reinvest in you and you do the same to others. Be in their life if you can make an incredible change, even in a small way, a difference. So what doesn't align with you, let go. It's time to, to release it, to detach, to cut away the cords. But do it harmoniously. Do it with your spirit guides so that you do not hurt yourself in the process or others. Do not think that you're above anybody here, right? We are shifting consciousness. You will you want through the laws of attraction to bring to your soul the action that most benefits you on your personal growth and of course you on the collective growth. All right, I am going forward with another reading on Elon Musk as it's been requested. And of course, bringing a little bit of clarity. I have not researched him. I have no intention to. Um, perhaps I will do a little bit of a read up later on to find out more about his personality, um, his bio, and of course, what his interests are. But for now, we are working with Spirit Divine. So what I want to share with you very quickly is, um, Elon Musk is a starseed. Right, as you and I are star seeds too. I was asked a question about him being an avatar, an alien avatar um, on Earth. And of course, yes, he is, but in a very different type of an alien avatar. Do not let the word alien scare you. That is what mainstream has always projected. Our communication from outside of ourselves has um, feared and created that perception of everything alien is frightening and um, terrorizing. No, the word alien is very neutral. There's positive and negative, right? As there is humans, positive and negative. Believe it or not, you will be alien to other star systems, to other species, as they are to us. So we must connect with energy by identifying it in a very unconditional way an all-encompassing way. So I am a starseed. I have the originations and blueprinting of many systems that I have trained in, that I have lived in, that I come from. So I'm not just human, right? As you are coming from different systems. A lot of us spend um, one a gross or cumulative um, training platform in a star system before we want to explore another, right? But a lot of us are very old and ancient souls and we have had exploration and self-discovery and growth and transformation and learning from many different systems. And then when we feel connected very deeply and we want to learn more, then we return to that and do the next level and the next one and so on. And Elon Musk is one similar being. He comes from many, many systems, right? He comes from, um, Spirit has given me Pleiades, right? And from there he brings, it's Pleiades is also known as the Seven Sisters. He comes from there to teach humanity about the cosmos about the galaxy, about out of space. He brings universal truth to our world and understanding the laws of physics and science and chemistry and um, science fiction and everything that is beyond our world and our um, daily understanding. He is really from a different plane of existence. So are we 
But his purpose is to ignite it here. Not just to be a scientist that is sitting far away and reporting. He is live, conscious, breathing, tangible, relatable. Also, teaching humanity their potential and what the meaning of potential is. Infinite possibilities. Tapping into the unknown without fear. Letting your dreams become reality, not just a figment of your imagination. Tapping into your inner reservoirs of a skill, wisdom, um, magic, mystic. That's the type of energy he is. And of course, undoubtedly, the advancement towards technological development, especially now in the age of Aquarius, with this vibration, this energy is building up a precedence and taking on um, a very forward progression and of course will be unstoppable. And as I've said in, in the reading yesterday um, or the previous reading, if you're listening to this at, at another time, is the fact that he has the um, ambition in which to do that and to bring it out live to let humans understand that we are not in a box. There is much more out there. Why are you afraid to explore that, to discover that? And he is making us very much part of his world by bringing his world to us. The other star system he's very connected to are the Syrians and he brings the traits um, very similar to the Pleiades where he's guiding human consciousness um, as the Syrians have done. He, um, as guardians, as teachers, as helpers, as guides, as leaders and again bringing through the um, transformation, the innovation and the evolution of technological um, infrastructure, technological platforms, technological advances for the greater good of humanity and of course for the luxury as well. What he also brings is um, as a seeker, knowledge, right? Um, his thirst for knowledge, his um, quench to learn more, to know more, to have um, enough is not enough for him. He wants more and more and more. It's like this constant um, excellence and brilliance of wisdom and information. And he has this broad band, celestial, literally stellar memory that he can keep um, putting things in, archiving things and go back and retrieve it effortlessly, seamlessly, sort of very infinitely. He's an unstoppable force, a go-getter, highly ambitious, very positive, impacting the world like the Syrians have come here to do. And we have many embodiments of these um, star seeds in human vessel, very connected to ancient civilizations. He's had timelines in Atlantis, in Lemuria, in ancient Egypt, and of course, many other civilizations and star systems that are even unknown to us from different galaxies and planes of existence. So he is very much an all-rounder and very uh, knowledgeable and skilled with different um, blueprints, different galactic prints, different systems and symbols and Nothing seems to be very difficult for him if he invests his energy and connects to that inner source and finds that um, a file that he's looking for that will uh, sort of click, or, um, uh, click in or switch on to give him that information. It's just all archived. He has his own celestial um, archive in his DNA that he brings through that he he is consciously tapping into and able to retrieve. So he's 
Um, but to me, that's a very gifted person with an incredible extrasensory psychic ability uh, from all of these ancient lives and training that he's received. Another star system is the Andromedans, right? Um, in him expresses that um, deeply philosophical, fascinating um, energy, that persona, that aura that he is able to um, baffle others, puzzle others, um, that's an intrigue about him. Um, explorative, he has this incredible, curious, multi-dimensional mind that's not just scientific but has um, mysticism about him, a whole lot of whimsy and childlike at the same time so he can be um, very deep in a train of thought but laughable, relatable, uh, comical, innocent and pure and his love for children is is amazing, right? He has this, um, obviously, an astronomical mind, celestial, interstellar, galactic mind that has the unparalleled compass for navigating our star systems, our galaxy, our constellation, and, of course, space in itself, and not just outer space, but human space. So he is quite a boundless, um, mysterious, imaginative being that is inhabiting, embodying a carbon a vessel here on earth and uh, very tapped into the weave and uh, fabric of the universal tapestry what is also interesting is when I sat with him, his energy, um, his soul energy, much earlier to figure out a little bit more about his name, which I must say I did yesterday as well, but not much had come through. I did pick on a, a few things and it sort of very fleeting, left my mind and moved me back into concentrate on just bringing his vibration through. But in the comments, one of our family members had pointed out um, his name, L, as in Elon from the EL, is um, having the vibration of, of God. And yes, I do agree with you. Now, I, I did answer that in the comments. You can go back and read it. But when I sat with that energy today and wrote down his name, immediately I got glyphs pictures, information, and I'm going to share that with you very quickly. So what had come through was, I, this is what I was playing with, Elon Musk, right? There's the EL, very much the Elohim energy, which is the God, um, or God-like, God-self, God-inspiring, God-sacred um, um, energy from divine consciousness, also, the EL is very present in our archangelic beings or sentient beings' names such as Michael, Joe Field, Ariel, Uriel, Raphael, um, Zadkiel, Azrael, all ending with the E, which is um, the suffix to his prefix as the messenger of God. What I found in his musk is the US, meaning not just the country, US, but the us, as in we, a collective of humanity. Right, so he is a messenger of the divine coming to help the collective of humanity. Right, and that's for me was quite amazing. Now there's the E and there's the M. Now if I turn the M this way, which is this way, there it is here. It becomes a mirrored, a reflection of a mirror facing yourself. Who am I? Why am I here? Looking yourself in the mirror and connecting with your true self, your true identity, your divine self. So he knows in his consciousness he's more than a human vessel. 
and then while I was thinking a little bit more, I brought immediately spirit said, join the two. Well, this is a three actually. Join the two threes in the opposite energy, the mirror effect, and what do you get? So I did that, and then I did it a lot closer, and we got the eight, which is infinity. As above, so below. So I decided to do that again, and I thought, okay, I can fill that gap up with some antenna, right? Um, kind of like the um, butterfly, right? Transformation, changes. And then I did that again and I thought, that looks like puffy clouds. Of course it is, it's out there in space, it's air, it's atmosphere. But that then becomes a tree as well which is grounding that energy on our planet. This beautiful vibration, the metamorphosis, as above, so below. Right. So we've taken the M and we've made it an opposite of the E. So I took the E to make it um, the M, and that's what I got, birds. Again, air, mind, he uses his mind, his consciousness is all connected above, elevated, celestial, with birds, with trees, with infinity, with butterflies, it's all about flight. He's a water sign, but he's finding his balance on earth and through air, which is his mind. Right, Earth is pentacles, it's grounding in human vessel, but he's constantly transformative. Um, he is transcendent. And also in the comments I read, um, which I have uh, seen the headlines that he is aiding um, Donald Trump in his campaign. He's sort of supporting him. So he's able to identify something in Trump that others may not. And I do not want to go at war with Trump after the first reading and no fingers pointed here. Um, I did say that he, Trump, is a game changer. He's a double agent, right? He is working towards a greater good, but he is seeming to please the dark to let them know that that's what he's doing. But he's not doing that. He's keeping them there so that they don't take him out, but that's still what they want to do, so they're kind of figuring him out. But he is on a double-edged sword, and I think Musk seems to be identifying with Donald Trump. Remember, Elon Musk is highly spiritually connected, very deeply, thoroughly. He cannot get that information to do what he does if he's not tapping into his divine um, archive and if he's not spiritually connected. I'm reading his soul um, vibration. I'm reading his DNA vibration. I'm not reading anything else. So do not tell me that's what he's done, this is what he's done, and all the negatives. That's not what I'm reading. I am reading, so we must understand when I do a reading, do not bring all the mistakes of a person into the reading. That's not what I'm doing here, right? We are trying to get to the authentic soul of the person and how that is playing out in humanity. There will always be trial and error. There will always be mistakes. There will always be opposing light. There will always be um, those that want to um, exaggerate your mistakes and give you even more darkness to that when it could just be something simple and we see mainstream exaggerating and mainstream and the establishment will want to shut down people like him because they voice they speak up they want to be part of the collective change the collective and of course add a bit of humor into that as well that can be taken the wrong way so whether you do something right, it's a problem. When you do something wrong, it's an even bigger problem. So what I find in Elon Musk that I see in Donald Trump that I did not look for that was pointed out to me is the O-N in Donald's name. 
together, the O-N. Donald, D-O-N, right? And the U, which is in the Trump. And we don't often get a U in someone's surname. And the U that connects them to U-S, the U that connects them to us, right? So we must think without prejudice and judgment, without discrimination and fault. We are not fault finders. We are truth seekers. We are spiritual seekers. We need to be um, connecting from a very unconditional, neutral, energetic space. And that's important when we understand that it is not necessary to keep accruing somebody's problems from the past into the forward, into the now. Give the person opportunity to show themselves, to expand on their energy, to better themselves. If we keep on bringing the past into the present, it can never change. All right, so let's do a reading now to further clarify your um, curiosity, your um, adjusting mind, spirit says, for some of us that want to know for sure if Elon Musk is authentic, is he for humanity, is he for the people, is he here to show the love, the light, the togetherness, or does he have an ulterior motive? Now, what I did in the shuffles, I saw the world card, and I reshuffled, which came up at the bottom, and then the star card came up, and I did a shuffle again, and interesting, we have the sun card, which was the first card from yesterday's reading, which now is the bottom card, showing you light and bright, and what I want to show you here is, there's the butterfly. There's the mirror defect of the yin yang, which was the three, um, the energy. All right, so if we turn that around, it's as if they are facing each other. It's a mirror defect of two different polarities. Um, what's interesting is, Spirit says, I didn't draw the butterfly for nothing. Um, little did I realize this card was coming up because I did this before, much before, an hour before I could actually settle down for the reading. Is look at that. Right, there it is here. And from there is a face of a child, illuminated by the light coming through. And of course, the tree was showing the grounding of earth, the sunflower. Wow. All right, let's go on. In life, we must give credit where it's due. In life, we must gratify what needs to be. What I learned about Elon Musk um, is that he changed, helped, he either changed it completely or he was instrumental in a great awakening of our banking system, moving it to electronic banking. He, um, I think, um, created the PayPal system where people could easily transfer money to others in different countries um, in obviously different currencies um, as opposed to standing in the long queues of the bank and with a check and having clearances and a whole lot of other types of um, processes that just prolong and delay your actual transaction so I think that deserves a big thank you for our lives would be so primitive without that kind of a process. And we all know what that means to be standing in long queues, trying to get money across, especially during emergencies. All right, so we have the sun. We have the hangman. That's raising vibration 
and looking at life in all directions. The as above, so below, there's the infinity showing itself, um, bringing from higher consciousness, no matter, through the lotus, or if the lotus is in reverse, remember, in a, that's how a human being should be, um, in its upright, in its divine connectedness and consciousness with spirit, is bringing through the pyramid of the hierarchy of constellation, celestial wisdom onto earth. Right, so with him, it doesn't matter which way he focuses, he's doing it. From the universe to earth and from earth back to the universe. So he's very connected through the spiral of life. We have the Eight of Swords. That's the infinity that spirit is talking about. Right. Um, the hearted energy. He's going to rise. There's the bird. There's the bird, spirit says. There's the bird. Right, I drew the bird. This was conscious channeling. This was given to me as um, almost like automatic writing. I just started and the messages were coming through in pictures, in symbols, in sigils. Right, so there's the bird. There's the eight. That's just part of the validation of what I read here. Nine of Cups, he is a Cups energy, a water sign, and we've got a bird, we've got love, and of course all that vibration from his different constellations, more butterflies, um, and of course bringing that into nine, into a completion. Today is the ninth uh, vibration, the beginning of Virgo, so a happy birthday to all our Virgos, that's just what came to me now. Um, I will do a reading, though, for the collective for the month of September. And, of course, the new zodiac signs that will come up. Um, if you want to still view um, for the month of August, which we still have a few days left, please do visit Playlist. Um, I think it is Playlist 3, 3 or 4. Um, I think it's 3, where I give you the astros for the month. So very much the fulfillment, the divine feminine energy, the softness, the compassion. Let's do one more. We have the king of wands, the ambition again. Right? Bringing through the crown, bringing through the vibration. All right. So what I want to share with you quickly on Elon is he was here during Atlantean times, uh, Lemurian times, and of course, um, ancient Egypt I also shared those timelines as many of you possibly um, have as well singular or combination when he was here he also worked with technology and he did with many others that have reincarnated on the planet as well at this particular time because of the changes that are taking place and what happened was um, being enlightened during that time, working with technology, and something um, went very wrong that caused the collapse of the civilization of Atlantis, which was a massive collapse that wiped out the civilization through misuse of technology and of course projecting that energy into out of space as well and he was part of um, trying to save what he could save or rescue the situation before it reached that complete catastrophe but he couldn't do as much he couldn't do as much as much as he tried he could only save very little spirit says so he returned he returned now to share that knowledge and wisdom with humanity and he wants to prepare humanity if ever we go through such a situation again that we are equipped that we have the knowledge how we can rescue ourselves um, out of that so he is trying his best to do as much because he feels that 
he didn't do as much then. But in actual fact, he did. He did a lot. But it was no fault of his entirely. Okay, so that's the message that has come through. Now remember, with every kind of technology that comes about, there will always be trial and error. There will always be things that will fail, because if you don't try, you will not know how to succeed. And as much as he's very connected, understand he's working in limitation with the Earth's resources that also need awakening. And humanity is not ready for accepting everything. And until we wake up, our consciousness will we understand where this is going. And then you've got the dark oppressors that do not want humanity to progress. And you've got the dark oppressors that want to fool humanity with technology to oppress them. So Elon Musk is in a very tricky position at the same time. Because he's holding a lot of blueprint for a, a technological advancement. So are others. And I also want to tell you that the children being born at this time that have come in the recent years and those that are coming are going to be very much like him. So if you're afraid of him now and what is going to come, then prepare yourselves for when you reincarnate that you are going to go through this kind of energy. And if we do not gear up for the awakening of higher consciousness, it's nothing to do just about technology here. It's about consciousness. He's teaching us that we are galactic beings. And technology is only but a medium to understand the cosmos at a greater and higher level. So tell us, Spirit, about a little bit more about Elon Musk. All right, and his work here on the planet. We have in reverse the Ten of Wands. He is breaking the boundaries, the struggles. He is shattering paradigms that have held humanity for cycles in constraint and strength. Right, he is doing a lot of, he's taking a lot of action from many different ways, in many different ways and forms to break those um, restrictions. He's going against the grain, against the barrier. He's going to create a lot of, um, Mm. he's going to upset the apple cart and of course rattle the cages um, it's only just begun and what he is doing is a lot of hard work it's tiresome and burdensome but he's not giving up he's persevering right um he wants to complete a lot. He wants to do a lot. So he's reversing the burden, the stress, the burnout of humanity by easing the pressure with technology. He's helping the way forward. Show the small spirit. The Prince of Wands. Right, we have the sun again, um, bringing forth the energy of um, different constellations, Spirit is saying. In Atlantis, he was not married. He was a prince. He was young and very vibrant, very handsome, very good looking, um, very charismatic. Um, but he was focused on his goals. He didn't have a family as big as he had now, has now. So in this lifetime, he has chosen to um, want to enjoy that. And perhaps the women in his life are coming through from that type of um, life soul contract with him. Maybe there was admiration to be in a relationship or um, he shared close bonds with them. So in this lifetime, he had um, completed those contracts. 
is an incredible star being. Five of Cups. All right, so he's come with that sadness of when everything toppled in Atlantis, right? It brought a lot of sadness to his life where that civilization went underwater, right? The entire city of Atlantis, the crystal city of Atlantis is in the Atlantic Ocean at the bottom, but it's rising. The vibration of that city is rising and it will surface, we are not sure when, when the Earth's vibration is right to receive it. So he is now here to anchor that transformation. There's the rainbow bridge from the other side. So his heart is with the population, with humanity. He has a very deep, ache, a very deep agony that plagues him about that timeline, which I don't think he, he realizes in this lifetime how connected he is, but he's determined to shift that vibration. King of Swords, Truth. Well, this didn't fall out, it flipped out, so I'm showing it to you. Um, he is in his grounding, in his balance, in his equilibrium, in his absolute divinement um, for truth. Breakthroughs, many breakthroughs will come. He's brought enough, but many will come. And he will keep reincarnating for as long as he's able to complete the assignments from the cosmos that he set out to do. As much as uh, being in a vessel like this is very stifling for him. Okay, give me one more. have the world cup that jumped and spirit says take that so here we are he is here for the betterment of the world that's our confirmation from spirit he's transforming beyond human understanding his mind is a galaxy on its own and all the lights are on and they are fleeting like ships all over the place, twinkling, shimmering, glittering. It's like you can't catch the light. You know, if you've got lights that are twinkling, you cannot catch it. It just keeps blinking and winking at you. You cannot stop it. You can't put it to a halt unless there's a setting for that. And that's his mind off and on, on and off, off and on, on and off. And it just keeps blinking and winking. And that's his, that's his world. That's his mind. That's his galaxy. Right, and that's what he wants to do. So whether it is the depth of the ocean where the turtles are, to so the transformation of the planet with butterfly energy, he is, there's the tree. Oh, wow, here's the tree. Spirit pointed, and it's number 44 on my clock, and I just saw 4422. That is symbolic of Master Numbers. He is a master in his right, in himself, and he is mastering a skill on the planet and helping humanity and the world master themselves. I'm not praising him. I'm reading a vibration. I'm reading a message. I'm the messenger. And this number, 21, is in today's date. 
21 becomes a 3. Right, so show us what's in his, is there a shadow self to him that we need to be um, careful of? Is there a shadow side? King of Wands, he's highly ambitious. So this is, for me, is a no. Right, only negative cards are going to show us the shadow side. So he is ambitious, he's go-getter, he is progressive, successful, brilliant. He's a diamond, right, perfectly cut. He's in his diamond consciousness of self, his galactic consciousness of self, right? He's passionate about what he does and he's, he, he doesn't... Uh, run out of ideas and inspiration at all. He doesn't run out of um, ideas and, and information at all. Let's continue. Um, are there shadows that we need to be concerned about? I have the six of wands that fell out on my right. This is victory. This is spiritual coronation, jubilation, celebration. This is a victory. He celebrated. The universe celebrates him because he's doing divine work. He's tapped into his scroll, his life path, his mission, his purpose. Unwavered. When he was, as from, as the divine says, from the time he was a little boy, he knew he was different. And he was alone in his difference because not he couldn't relate to others and others couldn't relate to him. He was a lone star, the Syrian star, the North Star, the brightest star in the class, in, in the school, um, wherever he went he stood out like a sore thumb because he was different because he was shining so bright all of the work that he's done humanity was ignorant of to a level or a point unless you were an avid follower of him or admirer of him but now with the age of Aquarius with the full swing of this vibration in its um, evolution and progression, you're going to learn more about Elon Musk. His name is going to be everywhere and just about anywhere you start searching. Anything else about a shadow side? That spirit says there's nothing more. Um, Ace of Pentacles and the Wheel of Fortune. Absolutely not. Right, there's no more shadow. It's big. What he's doing is big. And it's going to be fortune for the world. It's going to be positive. It's going to be fortunate. Right, Ace of Pentacles. What is Ace of Pentacles? It's manifestation of possibilities that we didn't realize. Right, it's teaching humanity how to create, to co-create, to manifest, to hold the vision, the imagination, to tap into the unseen, the uncharted, it is waking up non-believers to create. In a star format. Celestial format. Galactic format. This is what 5D is about and higher. He vibrates in 7D and higher. That is why he struggles to fit in. And I know what that feels like. Nothing brings him down, yet he can feel different and alone at times because he is. 
and that's star seed energy it's it's difficult to fit in okay we'll talk about um what it means to be chosen i have used that word you're the chosen one you're the light worker you're the star seed i will talk about that very soon what that means and you will be able to identify where you fit in and where you don't fortune it is a grand fortune to all the people of the world now look at how we have the angelic beings in all corners of the world that are supporting his collective Elon Musk, like others, have a lot of money. They don't need to care about the world, but he is. That's what I'm getting from the divine. He could have quite easily said, I've achieved what I wanted, I can take a break. I don't need to, uh, you know, uh, uh, butt heads anymore. All right, I want to leave that there. It's a long read again. From this deck, Spirit, show me. Let's bring that into the center. Um, help us understand what his purpose here on Earth is. Heart Chakra. Wow, did you see that? A whole lot of cards fell out. And I have a Star Seed Elemental. I'm going to take that one. Um, I have at the bottom the soul star chakra which is also number 10 which aligns with the 10 of the vibration here but this flew out he's operating from the heart center unfurling back to love he's teaching humanity to go back to the source which is love to connect to your inner self so he is working from the heart center a love vibration all right, little kitty. And the kitty is announcing that very loudly. He is a star seed. Spirit says that's the bottom line. He's a star seed. So when I use that word, the channeling, the message I got is correct. All right. What else do you want to tell us about um, Elon Musk? And his purpose with humanity right what fell out is the crown chakra on my right illumination unlimited self awakening divine consciousness spiritual connection galactic connection celestial connection stellar connection star seed connection he is connected so he's got his 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 crown and his heart in a perfect balance He's connected from the heart. And when you connect with love, now let me say to you, when you cannot uh, reach enlightenment if you're not unconditionally loving, because it doesn't work. You've got to connect with your heart, the passion, the power, the unconditional vibration for everything, even the grain of sand, even your worst enemy. Because if you judge, you can't be unconditionally loving can't be spiritual you can't say i'm on the path of spirituality and i'm better than someone else because i understand what the angels mean but you're not unconditionally loving and when you become unconditionally loving and all embracing all encompassing from the one the oneness the togetherness the divineness that's when you reach the activation full activation of the crown chakra and you tap into that infinite power, that galactic power, that soul star power. So he's got two of the main chakras in absolute balance. And he's still trying to ground himself on earth because it's a very different vibration to be confined in, restricted in, and feeling suffocated in a vessel. Um, what tried to jump here the infinite wow look at that that's the vibration of the eight infinity he's teaching us to jump into that reach for the stars into your fullest potential bring down the source of spirit to matter to your world to your life 
let's do one more i just saw 55 um rem bridger that's the card that um flipped over from the three that's at the bottom i'll read it right but we might not um take them all and at the bottom again we have a star seer this was the bottom card um which i should have showed you when i started rem bridger right he is bridging heaven and earth there's the bridge he's bridging heaven and earth as above so below as above so below so what did we have we had the ether crystal keys and the full spectrum these are all elements that he's working with ether which is air his mind constantly in higher energies crystal vibration he's awakening his keys his dna keys coming from the uh, crystalline temples the crystalline um, um a city of atlantis right there's the crystalline energy of atlantis full spectrum that's going um full swing full gear full steam ahead in all spectrums all constellations all um star systems of whatever his wisdoms are his wings right his wings come from many systems not just one i told you that a system that i don't even know and spirit says you don't need to know because you will never understand it the earth has no knowledge of it so if i had to give you a, a strange name of a star system nobody's heard of it here and it'll be like talking gibberish right so he is the full package right he is the full package um, for what he is meant to do for where he is taking humanity where he is leading humanity and of course that is incredible so i do hope um, that you are now feeling a little bit more relaxed and understanding and um, aware of what his vibration is what his energy is and of course why he is here i am not accounting and giving explanation for any of his mistakes and faults i came here with a purpose and spirit brought the message we need to know every bit of anyone's mistake needs thorough investigation and of course a full truth not what is projected by the media to understand what its truth is how it came about um, where it went wrong why it went wrong who else was involved to participate in that transaction so beautiful hearts it's a long read you can return to it um, in parts of course or listen to it in its complete vibration and with that i love you i bless you and I thank you until next.